Hi. Hi. How are you? Fine, and you? Good. Um, can you introduce yourself to us? Yes, my name is Daniel Jacobi. Daniel Jacobi. That's right. I'm the chairman of the board of uh, Tumura. Tumura. It is an Israel organization, a secular Judaism and humanistic organization in the country. Say, okay. And what, what, is it, what is your organization trying to do? We try uh, for the last 15 years to change uh, the society in Israel so it becomes more pluralistic. Okay. Our goal is to separate the, the church from the, from the state. Right. And to promote uh, secular, meaningful life for Jews in Israel. And, okay, and how are you trying to do that? We do that by three things. One, we have an institute in which we educate uh, secular rabbis, which is not an oxymoron, but it's uh, something very special. It's a four years program hmm. for uh, people after MA. After what? After uh, an MA degree. Okay. And uh, they learn in our institute for four years and then they get ordained as uh, secular rabbis. What does it mean to be a secular rabbi? It means to have a very vast knowledge in Judaism, culture. Not as a religion, but as a, as a culture. Huh. A culture which is, uh, I would say, 3,500 years old. Right. To understand the humanistic side of life and of Judaism the last 200 years and to be able to lead a community in the country. Isn't Ju Judaism religious by nature? Like by, by its, to its very core? Like isn't it about God and the commandments of God and God's law and the way people live? Well, uh, until 200, 250 years ago, Judaism was a religion. And since then, a very huge process of uh, secularization was uh, done in the Israel, in the in the Jewish people. And today, I would say that there are I don't know, like four, five, six different ways of being a Jew. You hmm. can be an Orthodox. You can be a reformer Jew, but you can, and you can be a secular Jew. And uh, that's according to the tradition of the, of the culture, not the religion. Hmm. And it's a very ancient culture. Can you define the line between what it means to be culturally Jewish and religiously Jewish? Like, how could you be culturally Jewish without being religiously Jewish? Well, that's very easy. Okay. I do not believe in God. Okay. For me, God is something that uh, people uh, use to justify different ways of, con of, of, of living. Right. And I'm a Jew because I believe that uh, my ancestors lived here in, in, the, in, the, in Israel or Canaan, what it was uh, many, many years ago. And we left uh, Egypt. Moses took us out of Egypt to be a free people. Allegedly. Pardon? Allegedly. Right. <laughs> That's correct. Right. I don't know if it is... Well, I don't know if it really did happen or not. Right. But when you believe that something is part of your culture, right. then it's part of your culture, whether okay. it happened or not. Right. The myth so, is part of the culture. The myth is part of the culture, okay. exactly. Right. It uh, could be a myth, but it doesn't matter. It's part of my narrative. Right, I see. And uh, all the immense working done by Jews along the years, from Moses to Spinoza, hmm. Einstein, and today. So, so you mentioned that you should mention there's four uh, different, different, different kinds of Jew. You have Orthodox Jew, Reform Jew, Secular Jew. Anything else? Well, conservative and reconstructionism and I don't know. 
So the others. why not? Okay, so secular Jews. The Jew difference between us and the others is that we are secular. Right. So they believe in Judaism as a culture and not as a religion. Not as a religion. Um, what if, so why 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 not be why are you not content with Reform Jew? Why secular Jew rather than the Reform Jew? Is there? A I uh, let's say uh, have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, respect for all the Judaism uh, different uh, traditions. Right. Orthodox, Reform, etc. But we are not a religion. The Reforms, they believe in God. They believe in God. They believe in there are several commandments mm. that are done by religion. Right. We do not. Okay, and that's... And we it, believe in the commands of humanism. Right. And you see there's an advantage to go, even, you know, to be a secular Jew rather than the Reform. Because a lot of people um, argue for you know, a reformed version of religion, but you take it to the next level, uh, to the secular Jew, do you think that gives you, uh, what's the advantage of that compared to just going with reformed Jews? Well, I don't really understand the question. I don't see the next as being the next level right. or an advantage. I see as being part of Judaism mm. that believes in humanism, right. in secularity, and not in God or religion, or the people that believe that they represent God Right. I guess where I'm going with that is that I personally think what you're doing is superior to being a reformed Jew because a lot of people think like, oh, if you reform religion, if it's not harmful, you know, it's pretty okay to deal with. But I think we should, as long as people, I, I rather be on the side of people that believe in no nonsense and no kind of superstition and no gods. So that's why, because at the end of the day, even if you're reformed, you still believe in certain ideas that are not true, which is going to be harmful to the way that you run things. And that's why I was, I was just going to see if you agree with me on that, that, you know, if you completely shake off all the nonsense, I mean, there's nothing wrong with keeping the culture as long as you don't believe in nonsense. Well, I could agree with you 100%, except that we don't see what we do is superior to reform. Okay. I we do. are not superior. Okay. We are a different way of being a Jew mm. that really we don't believe in superstition, mm. in, uh, no, no, in nonsense like uh, somebody represents God on earth and says what God would like to us to do. Right. We do not believe in God. We believe in humanism. We believe in uh, secularism. Uh, secularism. And in Zionism, we believe that the people of Israel should live where our ancestors used to live right. 3,000 years ago. So you consider yourself a Zionist? Excellent. Okay, yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to that. But before we go to that, why why secular Jew and not atheist Jew? And is it is it the contradiction to say somebody is an atheist Jew? Well, uh, in our organization, most of the people are atheists, mm. but some of them are deists. They believe there is a superior power mm -hmm. that may be like nature, like Spinoza did, mm. that regulates the world. And that's not being an atheist. But uh, being a secular Jew and an atheist, and it's not exactly the same, mm. but most of our people are atheists. I would argue Spinoza was not a deist, he was a pantheist. And pantheists technically are atheists, but, but I see your point. Yeah, you're making room for people that also believe in God, but as long as they think that religion should not have any influence in our political life. Well, I, could, I can agree with you that if God doesn't intervene in your life, so there is a God or there isn't a God, it doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. And I do agree that Spinoza was a pantheist, mm -hmm. But that's a, dis a philosophical di uh, I see, yeah. discussion. In real life, we have room for people that believe there is a superpower. Right. As long as we don't have commands that we have to do by, by religion. So, so, so given so a cultural Jew that is not religious, um, how how would you, is there a way that you could define that? What it means to be a Jew in your eyes? Like, how could you tell? somebody is a Jew because for you it, it, it's not ethnic and it's not religious it's just culture right how would you like can I become it if, if it's just culture can anybody become a Jew okay 
Judaism is a special case. Okay. <laughs> it's not like being a Christian. A Christian could be from America, from, uh, I don't know, England or, or Canada or whatever. Right. There is a, a, I would say, a part of the Jews I by ethnic participation in the Jewish people. But that's not the only way to become a Jew. According to the tradition, to the Jewish tradition, if my mother is a Jew, I, I'm a Jew. But no, that's not the only way to become a Jew. You can become a Jew, what we call to, 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 to do is a, a soci sociological conversion. If, we live, if, we, if you live in Israel, if you live according to the, uh, to the, calen to the Jewish calendar, mm. and you celebrate the Jewish uh, holidays, etc., and you live like a Jew, for me, you're a Jew. Hmm. And I don't have to exactly say if you observe the religion or not. If you do not observe the religion, but, but you observe the culture of, uh, of, the, Jew, of the Jew people, and you, live in, and you live here, you're a Jew. Is, um, is that a new thing relatively to the history of Judaism? Well, there is, we have a brother organization, or sister organization, I don't know. Uh, in the United States. Oh, what are they called? Uh, they are called the, the International Institute for Secular Judaism. Okay. And they have uh, about 30 communities, and the center is in uh, I don't remember, Cleveland, I believe. And uh, we are part of the, this uh, large organization. And they exist in, uh, in the United States for several decades. Uh, is there, is there? Although they are a small movement, of course. Is part of this because, um, you know, like you're Zionist, and you do you you want equal rights for all citizens of Israel, right? Is yeah. part of the attempt to mention that Judaism is not a religion or separated for both religion and ethnicity? is to open the door to people that are not Jewish in Israel, but are citizens, to be, co to be able to be considered Jews, like for example, Arab Israelis? Well, that's a thorny question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we believe uh, our humanistic uh, idea, ideas are such that we believe that people are born equal and they have the same rights, no, no matter if they are Arabs, Jews, or, or any other uh, people. But since most of the Arabs, not all of them, some of them are Christians, but most of us believe in Muhammad. They believe in their own tradition and their own culture. They are part of another culture. They are not part of the Jewish culture. But if an Arab wants to be a Jew and observe Judaism, for me, he can become a Jew. He can, he can become a Jew. Okay. But not, not, not uh, as, a, as a people, not as a, the, all the Arabs in Israel. Right. In the, an individual basis. Right. Um, so why? If you are like, why, why did, why is this insistence on Judaism? Why not promote secularism and humanism? Without, you know, why do we need to insist on keeping Judaism as an identity and as a culture? Why not just have an organization that just supports? Because we are a people. Okay. It's like asking why uh, Greek. We not is not insisting being a Greek. He can become a Canadian. He can, but if he lives in Greece right. and he's part of the Greek culture, he's a Greek. Right. If you live in Israel and you're a Jew and you're part of the Jewish culture, you're a Jew. It's not a, we don't insist in something. Mm. It's something natural. Right. Is part of the activism that you're involved with? is a response to the people that think that if you are secular or atheist you're kind of abandoning your Jewish heritage and you are fighting against that to show that you could be 
Jew and secular or atheist at the same time, there's no contradiction. And the insistence on being an organization that is very pro-Jewish and also pro-secularism is to introduce the, the, ma the people here in Israel that there is no contradiction in this. Is that exactly. part of it? We don't see any contradiction right. in being Jewish, being secular and atheism, right. and atheist, and uh, being humanistic. Course. Right. Is is athe it, yeah, go on, It's like any other person in in the world. Hmm. You can be an American, a secular American, and uh, an atheist, and uh, be humanistic. Because we are a people. We are not. We are a people that has a culture, and we don't. And we see the religion as part of the culture, but not as the culture. It's a subcategory of the culture, not the entire culture. Right. Um, is atheism seen as something like negative here, mostly in Israel? Yes, uh, the tradition. Well, Jews in Israel are divided or separated, I would say, according to different traditions. Right. Some of them are, are religious, but a lot of the Israelis are traditional, what is called traditional. Mm. They believe in the Jewish religion but they do not observe it according to all of the laws of uh, Orthodox Judaism. And they see that not believing God is against Judaism. And that's the reason why a large part of the Israelis see atheism as something negative. And how could you change that narrative? Like, how, what, what are the... What is the process? Well, the process I talked about, yeah. the, the institute, so we have right. people that can educate. The rabbis. The rabbis, they can educate uh, communities. The second leg is the communities. Mm -hmm. We have about 12 communities called Sicha, wow. which is the acronym for uh, secular Jewish communities. And we, organize them as a net so we have more power of all the communities being together observing several uh, I would say uh, principles and the third is we uh, instigate projects according to our beliefs for example we have a project called uh, uh, Unity without uniformity. We are united, we are one people, but we are not of one kind. There are different kinds of Jews in Israel. Mm -hmm. Judaism is not and never has been of one color according all the history of the Jews. There were different traditions of Judaism until 200 years ago, most of them were religious, but according to today, there are others that are not religious, but we still are Jews. So we, we want to promote pluralism, and we do, uh, we do uh, projects to do that. We have another project, it's called you, you Should Tell Your Grandson. You know, in Passover, you have to tell your son about living in Egypt, etc., we took this part of the Passover uh, Agada, and we say you should tell your grandson, which is a program together with the Israel Association of uh, Community Centers, for people to celebrate, especially Shabbat, the, the Saturday, yeah. according to the different tradition of uh, Saturday in Judaism, both secular and religious, to make some kind of, uh, I would say, unity within the within the, the, the people here, right. and to see that there are pluralistic ways of celebrating the same holidays yeah. in the country. So, if you abandon your beliefs, you don't have to abandon the rituals and the culture. That's what you're trying to convey. 
exactly. You, so, yes. Because a lot of people might be resistant to being atheist or secular because they might think that this is an abandonment of their people, of their history, of their culture. But you're trying to show them that you could change it. You could have be secular we atheist. Talk about unity, yeah, right? But is, is there? You mentioned there are some. You're suggesting rituals that. Um, you know, to replace the religious rituals with secular ones, right? So, um, can can you give us some example of some of the rituals? Well, Saturday, so they say that one is one. There is a religious way of celebrating Saturday, right? And we have a, a different way of celebrating uh, Saturday with songs which are secular with uh, uh, sayings that based on uh, secular humanistic uh, ideas and not according to the what you have to say according to the tradition mm. to celebrate the uh, Saturday. Do you see what do you see any similarities between this and anything um, what atheists and secular people are doing? Uh, that come out of a uh, Christian tradition or Islamic tradition or is this different when it comes to Judaism like what is it like for example um, a lot of people like myself we call ourselves ex-Muslim or ex-Jehovah Witness or ex-Mormon I even see many people who may mention ex-Christian is it but ex-Jew like the way you're explaining what it means to be a Jew then that would not apply to somebody that is an atheist that used to be religious. Like they're not in your eyes, they're not ex-Jewish. They're still Jewish. Yes. So what would you say to somebody that identify? What's the difference between, you know, somebody that used to be religious Jew and it's not? Like, what's the difference? You're saying that you could be culturally Jewish, but why is it that we don't see that with Christianity and Islam, but we see that with Judaism? What does that make it special? Well, I'm not sure, I'm not really aware of how ex-Christians believe in Christianity or, or do not believe in Christianity. I really don't really know. Hmm. But uh, for a Jew, to be a Jew is being part of the people. It's not being part of the religion. So hmm. I don't see the problem. Right. He's part of the people. They, they observe the culture of the Jewish people as it was many, many years ago and as it is today. But they are not religious, so I don't really see the problem. Yeah, I, I just... In the way I think, I don't see the problem. Yeah. Others see a problem. Hmm. I just, um, I, you know, what, what is interesting to me is that it's very similar to people that... Uh, um, this conversation is very similar to people that have left Hinduism. They used to believe Hinduism. Like when Christians leave Christianity or when Muslims leave Islam, they most of the time they don't consider themselves Christian anymore or Muslim anymore. But within the Jewish community and within the Hindu community, when they stop believing in their religion, there's a debate on whether they're still Jewish or still Hindu or are they ex-Jewish, ex-Jews and ex-Hindus. Well, actually, I could ask you is Hinduism a religion? I, I guess that's the similarity between Hinduism and Judaism, that, they, that that's the discussion to be had. Hinduism, as long as I know, Hinduism is not a religion. It's a way of thinking. It's a very old one. It's a very interesting, uh, interesting one. I learned some Hinduism because it was very, uh, I was very curious about Hinduism. But, if I believe that uh, Judaism is not a religion, hmm. it's a culture of the Jewish people. So I, I can leave the Jewish people if I do not want to be a Jew. But if I'm part of the Jewish people, I cannot be an ex-Jew. I believe in the culture of the Jewish people. This country was founded on the idea that uh, every, every people is entitled to have a country. So there is a Jewish country here that was decided in the United Nations in, four, in 1947. Hmm. A, Jewish, a Jewish country for the Jewish people, not for the Jewish religion, 
for Jewish people, not for Jewish religion. Um, my, uh, my, Mike here, uh, let me know what you think about this because my, my, my guess is that Judaism and Hinduism have a much longer history than Christianity and Islam. And when you look at ancient religions before Christianity and Islam, they were religions for a specific group of people. Christianity and Islam became universal religions that was not for, it could be for anybody. It was not for a certain country or certain race. And I think that maybe the difference is that if the religion was for a specific group of people, it became such a big part of their identity that it went beyond just being religion. It became, it got merged more with culture and more with a sense of identity that is hard to separate anymore, right? Uh, you know, kind of like Zoroastrianism was for Iran, or the uh, e Egyptian gods were for Egypt. So Judaism was for the Jewish people, and I think that might be the difference. That it's hard to draw the line between where do people, where do, does the religion start, uh, where, where, where does the religion end and the people begin? And because that's a br blurry line, um, that makes it different from Islam and Christianity. Is that something that you could? Well, perhaps you're right. I don't really, I, I haven't investigated this, this angle right. of the difference between Judaism and, uh, and other religions many, many years ago. I haven't done it, so I'm not sure, but I, perhaps I can agree, but think about that, about this. We all used to live here in Israel until 2,000 years ago, trying to elaborate yeah. Yeah. on the difference between the Jewish people right. and other peoples. Right. So you're saying 2,000 years Something ago. that didn't happen to other peoples. Right. Different uh, ways of evolution. Right. So 2,000 years ago, the Romans destroyed the temple, mm. and the Jewish people were scattered around the world, what used to be the world of those days. Europe and uh, Africa and part of Asia and all of them were still Jews. They observed the same religion. Religion was really a part of the culture that in all of them saw themselves as Jews that are observing the same religion. The traditions were different between different communities. There's a community in Yemen a community in Iraq, in a community in Spain, or in Germany, it was in Germany those days, but in this area, they didn't have the same traditions, but they observed the same religion. And it happens, and it happened for 2,000 years. And there weren't many changes in, 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 the, in the religion, but there were many changes in traditions around the different communities. But all of them were Jews, until, as I said before, 200, 250 years ago, it started a process of, uh, of uh, secularity in the Jewish people, like in all the world. I don't see any other people with a similar history hmm. that had so many problems being so many in so many communities around the world and still be part of one people. Right. So that's a big, big difference in the history, the traditions and the culture of the Jewish people versus other ways of uh, being a people. So I guess the difference is that there were other people that were you know, dispersed around geographies, but what happened to them was that they disappeared as a culture. But for some reason, the Jewish people managed to, even though after they lost their land and managed, they were all over the globe, somehow they managed to still be united and keep their identity, which is... Um, I am not sure they were really united, but they keep their identity. Right. Which for that time is very amazing, given that they weren't connected, but they still managed to... Well, I... On that, I did some uh, work, and uh, they were connected. They were connected? Yes. And the connections, the connection was the merchants. Mm. Jewish merchants that traveled all around the world. And the main reason was 
that Jews are uh, taught to read, uh, to read and write since four or five years old. Which was unique for that time. Most people didn't know how to read and write, yeah. It was very unique. Yeah. So they could establish a real network of mm -hmm. Jewish merchants all around the world by written words, by written contracts, and they pass things from one community to another right. all around the world. And I try to study this phenomenon according to the network, social networks uh, uh, concept. Right. And it's really interesting how the, 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 these communities in the first thousand years after the destruction of the temple were connected according to this network of merchants that traveled from Spain to India. Right. Um, one thing I wanted to make sure I asked before I forget, like I mentioned, like one of my friends identifies as an ex-Jew. Um, if somebody wants to say, like, you know what, I'm I'm an ex-Jew, I'm not Jewish anymore. If I'm an atheist, I don't want to identify as Jewish anymore. Do you think that would you ident still identify them as a Jew, or no? I Identity is a personal issue. Right. If he doesn't identify himself as a Jew, mm. he's not a Jew. He's not a Jew. And then, uh, if an um, Arab Israeli citizen says, I identify as a Jew, uh, an ex Muslim Arab. Um, as a, 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 as I elaborated on that. Yeah. If he says, I am a Jew, right. but he lives as a Muslim, he's not a Jew. He's not a Jew. But if he, say, if he says, I am a Jew, and I observe the, tradi the Jewish tra secular tradition, mm. secular culture, the Jewish calendar of uh, holidays, etc., etc., he's a Jew for me. Why is it? And it, for me, it's not a question whether he is an Arab mm. or an American or a Russian. Mm. It, it's a question of identity. If he says he's a Jew and he does what they say, He's a Jew for me. Um, what is the Im importance of, you know, it seems, you know, of following the calendar, following the observing the holidays and the traditions. What? Why is that important to have? That's part of culture. And why is that? Imp why is it important to keep that? What is it? Well, that that's part of our narrative. You can be, you can live in the United States and say, I am a, an American citizen. But they do not observe nothing from the American tradition, like, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, Thanksgiving, mm. which is not a religious, uh, religious holiday. Then, what it means to be an American, that you live there. So, you can be an Israeli, and you live in Israel. But if you don't observe nothing from the Jewish culture, you're an Israeli, that is not a Jew. But you, would you see it as a tragedy if the Jewish culture disappears? Yes, of course. That's the narrative for my people. I want my people to exist. Well, I mean, the, I mean, the, if, if the people continue to exist but without observing the culture, why can't like you say oh, you want your people to exist, but if they stop observing the culture, are they going to stop exi existing? Well, pe persons will do not uh, stop to exist. But the Jewish people will stop to exist. And what's, why is that a bad thing? For me, it's because it's bad. <laughs> You're asking me if, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, the Italians, okay? Right. If the Italians do not, they live in, in Italy, but they do not believe in the Italy culture, Italy tradition. Is that a, tra a tragedy? I mean, you go and ask them. I believe that Italy is Italians are proud of the history of what the Romans have done, etc., etc., etc. For me, it's the same thing. I mean, they would say, they would probably say, yes, it would be a tragedy, but I think, I, I just, when I ask why, I don't get an, because if you look at threat history, history, many cultures disappeared and was replaced by new cultures, right? Um, it's not like there's not going to be a culture, it's just some cultures die and then new cultures are born. Why is it that if but a culture why, dies... But why you, I sh have to think about my culture to disappear when I believe that it's a very important culture that have given the world 
Saturday. It's the, the first and only people that they didn't work one day a week. People used to work seven days a week, 365 days a year right. in, in the ancient world. The people, the, the, the Israeli culture says, love thy neighbor as thyself. That's part of humanism from 2,000 years ago. So that's a very important tradition that I believe in the, its narrative. Why do I have to think? For me, it's a tragedy if it that doesn't continue. Uh, okay, but we um, cultures that are dead now, also, they pa they're not around anymore, but we took a lot of things from them that we kept, even though the cultures are not around anymore. And maybe new cultures, if they replace old cultures, Give they could example. also... Give I am like uh, Valentine's Day, for example, comes from Roman that's culture. That's not a tradition. That is not a culture. That's a celebration that you can celebrate or not celebrate. But if you speak about the Easter, for example, like Easter. hiding eggs is comes from like it's, the part of the, it's Christianity, but eggs and bunnies come those from. Those are traditions. I'm talking right. about so something much more profound, right. something which is in the core of the believings of people. If you talk about Hinduism. That's uh, really a culture. Mm. Uh, it, for me, it's a religion, as long as I understand Hinduism. And you look at the, at the, at the, at the Greek, they have really a culture that has given the world democracy, etc., and uh, philosophy, etc. So, will the, the, the Greek tradition disappear? Or I'm not talking about holidays, I'm talking about tradition. Okay, so for example, the, Greek, the Greeks gave us an understanding of democracy, for example. But the Greek um, traditions do not exist anymore, but we took that from them and we still have that. I do believe that the Greek people believe in their culture, in their narrative. Right. If you ask a Greek whether he's part of uh, ancient Greece, we say yes, because that's what they believe. So you don't think that there's a way that we could come up with ways of living and values that are beneficial to humanity without relying on culture? No, you not don't at think all. So? Okay. For me, it doesn't exist. Every person lives within a certain culture and he's part of the culture and he was educated according to this culture. Hmm. And he can change his culture, but he is a, a part of the culture. So I don't think that people exist outside of cultures. Right. So Why I, they live in the woods, I don't know. So if we define culture like that, that would become you know a bigger uh, category than I thought. But for example, like if you look at um, Europe, Western Europe in the 1800s and stuff, they, the Enlightenment values that came out of it from philosophy, right? Uh, they came up with a lot of ideas that we benefit from today, freedom of speech, due process, human rights. It wasn't based on an ancient tradition and history and a way of practice that, you know, it was based on some philosophers, you know, some people logically thinking what's benef what benefits humanity and coming up with the conclusion that all of us are benefiting from. Why, um, given the amount of great ideas that came out of some a small group of people in a short amount of time, without relying on history and tradition, was you know, why? Um, why can't we keep doing that? It seems like the good ideas that we get from cultures that are based on history is like few and far between. Like we keep point to things that benefit us, but I mean Saturday, I mean what else? You know? Well, actually, you are you insinuate that the Jewish culture has frozen, and that's not the situation. The Jewish culture has evolved according to the Enlightenment, and there are many, many Jews that uh, made great things in the last 200, 150 years, as I say, and the, 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 the culture evolves. It's part, they change, the culture changes along the years uh, as any other culture. So it's not focusing on ancient traditions. The tradition is 3,500 years old. Hmm. And it's also one day old. Because maybe yesterday right. some person made a very great uh, uh, masterpiece on something 
that will be part of our culture in the next year. So I guess um, the, the way I look at it is culture has two is refers to two separate uh, group of um, ideas. Everything. One of them is dance, art, food, clothing. That's one side of culture, which is more about fun and enjoyment, and you know. But the other one is values and ways of living. I when it, the first category, I don't see any personally. I don't see any issue with you know observing culture, evolving culture, changing culture, because it's just about you know enjoying certain way, you know enjoying art and food. But when it comes to ways of living and values that we need to adopt, if we if the labeling of it, if it's Jew or Islamic culture or Christian culture or Hindu culture, to me it seems like it anchors it to to the past and slows down its progress. That's your problem. It's not <laughs> okay. my problem. But you disagree with that? I disagree. I completely disagree because, okay. as I say, culture has not frozen. Culture is changing every moment, every second. That's one thing. The second. We see another pillar of our beliefs is humanism. Right. And we combine humanism with Judaism. And we combine secularity with humanism. So the culture is much more wide than ancient values. It's the values, it's ancient values that sweet the, the today's thinking, modern values, and values which are universal. So that's part of the whole tradition of the whole culture that we instigate in, in Israel as plurality of thinking. So for me, the, the culture is much more wide than the ancient values. Right. It's all the things combined. Okay. Um, just one one last pushback on that, and I'll move on. I'm sorry. This is a, um, if. But the thing is. If it's so, if your definition of the Jewish culture culture is so broad that it's changing and so new every day, it seems like uh, it keeps evolving every day. Doesn't it seem like it's the definition for it is so loose that it could they would lose its meaning altogether? If it's that loose not at all, no. Okay. Because we again, yeah. I'm talking about one narrative. My ancestors were Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Whether it is Allegedly. a myth, right, yeah. whether it is a myth or not, it right. doesn't matter. It's part of my narrative. Part of narrative. So, okay. the narrative is a Jewish narrative. The values are the values that evolved along the years. Right. Um, one thing I wanted to touch on is that I constantly hear this argument. People say that Israel needs to be either a Jewish state or a democracy. It cannot be both. Do you understand? Do you know? That, have you heard that before? Of course I did. Okay. What are your thoughts? And the about? answer has been done many, many times. We are a Jewish democratic country. Right. We believe in rights for everyone, men and uh, men and women. We believe in democracy. We believe in, uh, in uh, elections, etc. And uh, we are uh, we are a country for the Jewish people. But like Italy is a country for the Italians. Do you do you think that non non Jewish people will be seen as second class citizens if Israel is a Jewish state? Well, that's a danger that has to be uh, eliminated in this country, and that's part of what we believe that we should educate people to see Judaism as a culture which sees everyone equal and not as a religion that if you are not a religious person, you are not, you are not equal to the Jews. But what if I don't observe the culture either and, and I'm an Israeli citizen? Am I, do I, if we keep saying Israel is a Jewish state, I feel like I'm being told like this is not my country, that I don't belong here, that I'm a second class citizen. So. And you agree with that? If somebody is a, uh, it doesn't observe the culture, that they that they're le that they're not part, are they? Do you still consider them part of this country? As of a, course. And so, how? What would you let me? Let's say, for example, I'm an Israeli citizen, and I don't, and I'm like, let's say I'm an Arab, I don't observe the culture. 
I am telling you that if you say... That's part of the head. Uh, well, I think that... Uh, <laughs> I don't really understand uh, your point of view. Okay. If people are equal, and if it's a, it's a democracy, every citizen has the same rights as the other citizens. Mm. So what is the problem? If he's a Christian, he's a Muslim, or a Jew, they have the same rights. Right. They pay taxes, they get what they get from the government, they go to the school, they work here, what they participate in elections. If if you are asking me if there are people that thinks that uh, not Jewish are second grade, yes, they are. Should I tell you about what uh, white people in the southern part of America thinks about uh, Afro Americans? There are people in the United States that don't see the Afro Americans as equal to them. So what? Right. It means that America is not a, a, a democracy. Right. So, but okay. So you see that as something that is true, but it's a problem that other countries have as well. No. And then, what I see is that uh, there are, there is a minority that thinks that Arabs are not equal, and that minority doesn't govern the country. Okay. So you're saying there are people here in Israel that do see Arabs as a, as a second-class citizens, but. They're not like they don't represent most of Israel. Exactly, and there are other countries where minorities think different things than what the country is. Uh, you mentioned these rabbis that you are educating. Are they? Uh, do you, is it? Do we have atheist rabbis? Is that is that a thing? Okay. Yeah. Can you explain how is that possible to be an atheist? Rabbi, rabbi is a title. Right. Can be a professor or an atheist. Yes. Right. Rabbi is a title for leading communities, for educating according to the Jewish culture. traditions and culture. It's a title. It's not a. It's, it's not a denomination. I really would like to meet an atheist rabbi and see what the. You are meeting one. Oh, you are a rabbi. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> not in, in two months, in several months, I'll be a rabbi. Oh, in seven. Well, you, you already finished my learning. Well, congratulations in advance. Uh, you mentioned the four pillars of your uh, organization before we were, we were recording. Do you mind mentioning it again? The four pillars. Yes. Uh, one pillar. Uh, one pillar is uh, Judaism as a culture. Right. The second is secularity. Right. The third is humanism, that human beings are born equal, oh. and the fourth is Zionism. Zionism. Yes, a Jewish country for the Jewish people. Jewish people. Um, so, so is there a difference between saying that Israel is a country for the Jewish people and saying Israel is a Jewish state or because some people say like I say Israel is for the Jewish people but I won't go and say Israel is a Jewish state is there do you understand, is there a difference I don't understand the difference really well you should read the Declaration of Independence right. of Israel of 1948 mm. it says that we are a Jewish a Jewish country right and uh, all other people are equal, mm. men and women, different religions, etc. Right. right. And, and Zionism, like a lot of people outside of Israel, when they think about Zionism, um, they think about something religious. Um, but religion was secular right from the beginning until the end. For, from the beginning. In, in fact, the founder of Zionism, he, he himself was very... Was I know, there were, wasn't one founder, there were several, okay. and all of them were secular. All of them were secular? All of them were secular. Not uh, most of them, I would say. The vast majority of them were secular, and uh, kibbutzim were established, uh, in the, I would say, starting almost 100 years ago, they were secular. Is there something within uh, you in the United States? You have the separation of church and state. In your declaration, what um, of, of Israel as is a state? Is there something also similar that um, separates the power? No, no. no. There is uh, one thing that uh, that's part of one, maybe the major, the major uh, mistake of Ben Gurion. 
and there is one thing. The religious people came to Ben Gurion after the country was established because nothing is written in the Declaration of Independence on that. And they say that, and they ask, they demanded that uh, the laws according of for uh, marriage and uh, divorce should be kept as they were during the British mandate. And during the British mandate, these laws were the laws of religion mm. for every uh, people that lived here in Israel. Mm. The Muslim was according to the Sharia. Right. And the Jewish, the Jews were was according to the to the religion, mm. and Christians according to the church, etc. And that's the uh, the main mistake of Ben for coalition uh, for uh, uh, except for, uh, to ha in order to have a coalition, mm. he uh, accepted their demand. And uh, this, uh, the law of uh, marriage and divorce is according to the Orthodox tradition. Right. And then, and for that, the church is not separated from the state. So that was like the, the opening for them to get involved in everything else. Like when I wouldn't say in everything. They are involved in that. Okay. In other things, it's a question of politics. Of right. politics. Right. It's not a question of religion or, or the state. And is, is this why we have Sharia courts here in Israel? A government funded Sharia courts? This is something a lot of people would be shocked to hear, I mean, outside of Israel, that because a lot of people see Israel as anti Muslim, anti Arab, but we have. That's, gov part, that's part of the law. Yeah, but it's part, we have government funded Sharia courts in Israel. That was, that was mind blowing to me when I found it. I mean, yes. Yeah. So, um, is, is religion these days. A, becoming more influential in politics, less influential, what's the direction? The influence of religion in the country is according to politics, nothing to do about principles. Because today the Likud needs uh, religious parties to right. be part of their coalition. They give them a lot of, of, of uh, favors. favors and influence. Right. If tomorrow but, and that will happen. But if tomorrow the religious parties will not be part of the coalition, they will have less influence. Is that something you, like people like you are fighting against to yes. reduce the influence yes. of religion in politics? Yes. Yes. And have you made progress in that? No. No. Okay. No. Well, then how could people how could people support? Because this is something that we need to help you people that are concerned about the influence of religion in Israeli yeah, politics. But, uh, Politics and money are more strong than any ideals. Right. But so why are you, you mentioned that you are an apolitical organization and uh, and you do not want to become a political? Yeah. Why? Why? Because uh, in our organization, the people that are part of uh, the right wing uh, uh, part of the politics, of left wing part of politics. Because people differ, believe in different ways of thinking in the economy, in, uh, in the defense, in other things, not only in religion. But you want to influence politics? We want to influence politics, but not to be part of a party. Not to be part of it. Okay. And, and how can people support your organization if they, if they feel like this is something that they want to get behind? People that believe in our four pillars support us. People that don't believe. We are not a big organization because it's difficult to be uh, to believe in these four things at the same time. At the same time, right. it's very difficult. So, are you are you a minority right now? The people that you think that you could be Zionist and support secularism, uh, we are, humanism, we are, and Zionism. We are a minority. You are a minority. Yes. A growing minority. Yes but not as fast as I would like to be. Okay, well, w w where can people find you online, on your website to come? Do you have like a way, a yes. ways to support you on your website? Uh, we have a website that can, we can make, uh, yes. Okay, so what's the website? The website is uh, judaism.org.au uh, Judaism.org.il 
Okay, judaism.org.il. I'll make sure like we put like a link to that in the description. Is there anything that you really wanted to mention that I didn't ask about? <laughs> you asked about a lot of things. <laughs> some of them I do agree, some of them I disagree. Right. But I think that's been interesting. Okay, great. Uh, how much time is it? Is it around? I, mean, I, I would like to do it. Yes, to finish okay, it good. It's possible. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> thank you. All right. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.